Good evening, Internet. It is I, The Real Shroom, and tonight I'm going to play some post-rotation standard. Yes, standard rotation has taken place, finally. So gone is the Wandering Emperor, wedding announcement, all of the triomes, like Blood Tithe Harvester, you know, so many staple cards that have been dominating the standard format for so long have now rotated, and it's kind of the Wild West in standard, and uh, I've been playing a little bit and having a lot of fun, so I'm looking forward to really getting into standard uh, while I wait to see the results of the ban and restricted announcement from Modern and Pioneer. And tonight, we're going to dip our toes into standard with some talented banditry. What I mean by that, let's take a look. So, for my first real foray into new standard, I am sticking to my comfort zone, which is blueback black base control. And I knew I wanted to add uh, either white or green to the deck because there's a lot of really problematic enchantments that are being played right now from Bloomborough, like all of the talent enchantments need to be dealt with. So uh, as well as graveyards are, are something that a lot of decks utilize right now. So um, we're going three colors, which we'll see how good the uh, the fairly poor mana bases of standard supports it. Anyway, we are Demir based control deck and we're got a very heavy discard emphasis Primarily because of this card, Bandit's Talent, which is printed in Bloomborough. It's a class enchantment. These are back from the D&D days. Uh, for two mana, it enters the battlefield, makes each opponent discard two cards, unless they discard a non-land card. So most of the time, it means they're going to discard a non-land card, which is good. You know, at other times, if they choose to discard lands, it's a two mana Mind Rot, which is fantastic. Then you can level it up to level two to have it be like a Shrieking Affliction. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that opponent has one or fewer cards in life in hand, they lose two life. So uh, our hand has, our deck has plenty of ways to make our opponents discard cards. They're gonna be getting those ticks for two every single turn uh, after discarding a card from Bandit's Talent. So it's like an enabler and a payoff all in one, which is awesome. And then for level three, which you can acquire with four mana, at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card for each opponent who has one or fewer cards in hand. So it's also a card draw engine. In the late game, when we have our opponent stop decking and taking pings from the from the from the bandit's talent, we're going to be drawing extra cards, and that's exactly what we want to do in a control deck. So this is definitely a build around kind of card, and I'm leaning very heavily on discard uh, in order to facilitate this. In addition to the four about bandit's talent, I've got three of binding negotiation. This is just a two mana thought seize. That's kind of the going rate for thought seize effect these days except that um, we can choose to instead put a f exiled card our opponents control into graveyard in their graveyard instead of making them discard which is actually quite handy because there's tons of like uh adventures you know like all the virtues there's like you know the the gruel guy the druid there's the golgari guy the, the there's the uh the dragon the rakdos dragon uh, that i see a lot so there's just tons of adventures tons of good targets for the alternate mode of binding negotiation otherwise just a two mana thought seize which is a card that i've played in standard in the past which is it's it's good and then of course liliana of the veil vale is still legal for some reason because they decided to extend rotation. So we're playing three of Lilies as a discard piece that can be repeated each turn, as well as a sack piece. You know what this plane walker does? It's extremely powerful. And um, we also are playing a couple of hostile negotiator investigators, rather. Uh, these are four mana, four three that makes their opponent discard when they when it ETBs, and whenever one more player discards, we get to investigate once each turn. So it's a four three for four, makes our opponent discard immediately, facilitating our bandits talent plan as well as giving us a clue every time they discard which is really sweet and it's got a good power so it can beat down pretty well uh we also are uh demir control so we are countering our opponent's stuff with three steps ahead which can double as card draw it also uh for four mana can instant speed copy a creature we control which might become relevant we do have some pretty good creatures in our deck uh we're playing three of no more lives because we're esper this is a fantastic counter spell it's mana leak for two mana, you know, white and a blue, that exiles a card instead of making it go into the graveyard, which is fantastic. Uh, we also are trying out a couple of spell guyers. I like spells like this that are very versatile. It's two and two blue for an instant, choose one counter target spell, or it does a glimmer of genius, kind of. Surveil two, then draw two cards. We don't really use the graveyard at all, so the surveilling doesn't matter to us. Um, but, um, you know, it's sc scry two, draw two cards, which is a, a good card selection spell for a control deck like this. And then we are playing a bunch of removal as well. We got the cut downs, a couple of those, a couple of go for the throats. We're splitting the white removal between one get lost and one stroke of midnight, which I'm trying right now. Now, I kind of hate get lost. 
Uh, it's a, definitely a double-edged sword. Like the way the versatility of its removal is very good, but I've often seen this card turn into a draw two for our opponent, which is something we really don't want because we're like a rack deck. We don't want our opponents drawing extra cards. And uh, I've been bitten in the behind by this card many, many times. So I'm trying out a Stroke of Midnight instead, which is a three mana instant, one white and two colorless, destroy target non-land permanent, so it can hit anything, not just planeswalkers, creatures, and enchantments. Its controller creates a one one white human creature token, which I think is significantly less downside than giving them two map tokens most of the time. Uh, this isn't great for our deck specifically because we are a Liliana of the Veil deck, so giving them a one one means that they're pretty well, you know, insulated from her edict which is not what we want so that's why i'm only playing one i think in other decks where you would run get lost you might want to replace some or all of them with stroke of midnight that's my theory anyway although it costs a, an extra mana i think the the upside of not giving them those clues potentially two extra cards is pretty high um, and then we are playing some sweepers as well uh, because you've got to play those control decks to overcome early aggressive draws. A couple of no witnesses. I believe this is the only four mana sweeper that remains legal in standard. Um, it does give our control our opponent a clue, which isn't ideal. But you know we have so much repeatable discard, so much redundant discard in this deck that I feel like giving up a, a clue or two to a no witnesses isn't going to be the biggest deal. You know. They can draw a card, we just make him discard with another binding negotiation or an uptick of Liliana the Veil. I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker. I think the upside of having a four mana sweeper is outweighs the downside of giving them a clue, particularly when our mana may not be particularly fast and it might be hard to reach five mana for our one of Sunfall, which I have in this deck as well, which we know is a really good sweeper that gives us an incubate token and exiles everything. So that's very good. And we have card draw as well. I've mentioned the three steps ahead and the uh, spell guide, which can function as card draw. Also have one of Kaito, Dancing Shadow. Just trying out this Planeswalker. Um, it's four mana for three loyalty Planeswalker that says, when one more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you may return one of them to its owner's hand. If you do, you may activate the loyalty abilities of Kaito twice this turn instead of only once. I don't think we'll ever use that. It can plus one to make one target creature not able to attack or block until our next turn, so it can protect itself reasonably well. For zero, it just draws a card, or it can minus two to create a two-two colorless drone artifact creature with death touch, and when this creature leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses two life and we gain two life. So it creates a good blocker for us and can just zero to draw cards every turn. That's what we're looking for really is just a repeatable uh card draw engine we have a one of urtai uh just as kind of all around piece just a sort of like safety valve um it's not like the best card in the world but i think it's very versatile i like the fact that it can counter destroy anything it can stifle anything it does give our opponent a card but as we just mentioned you know we have so much redundant discard effects that i don't think giving up a card here or there is really that much of a downside and to close out the game, we've got a Shieldred, because this card is also still legal for some reason, and will be for like another year. Uh, so uh, I'll be playing plenty of Shieldred, and I think lots of other people will as well. Uh, we've got one Aklazot's Deepest Betrayal as a, you know, very synergistic uh, win con. Big, big flying life linker that makes our opponent discard whenever it attacks, can get us bat tokens, gain life, and is very difficult to deal with uh, because it can come back as a land and... Uh, turn itself back into the Bat God. And a two of Stoic Sphinx, which I'm just a big fan of this card in decks like this that are, you know, controly, that sometimes will want to hold back mana and um, hold up counter spells and whatnot. Um, it's just the rate alone, a four mana for a five three flying flash, a five power flyer that is hexproof a lot of the time. You know, we're a control deck, so we can often choose when we're casting or not casting spells so a lot of the time this is going to four mana flash five three flyer which along with our rack effects i think is just going to close out games pretty quick so i'm going to try out the sphinx haven't tried it in standard yet i've been playing it in like explorer for a while and i do like it there so let's see how it does in standard so that covers the main deck a total of 26 lands in our deck uh, we are a control deck so we want to be able to play spells and hold up uh counter magic reaction spells um We've got one of each of the uh, different colored um, creature lands. We've got a reckless an Restless Anchorage, a Restless Fortress, and a Restless Reef. Uh, we've got some Fast Lands, um, some Fabled Passages, some Surveil Lands. Our mana base, I think, might be a little slow. And mana for three colored decks seems a little rough in Standard, honestly. I'm certainly not an expert in how to build standard mana bases as of yet nobody really is uh, the slow lands all rotated which is really rough on decks like this so i think we may uh we may 
have our mana base be a little slow, but hopefully we have enough um, action up the curve that this won't penalize us too much. And the upside of what our lands do will outweigh the downside of possibly having some uh, more tap lands than we would like. The sideboard contains three doorkeeper thralls. I think ETB effects are going to be very popular in standard, so um, I think this is a good hate piece to have for those kinds of decks. Three rest in peace to deal with the graveyards, because yes, graveyards are indeed very high, highly used in standard, so we want rest in peace. It is simply the best graveyard deck, uh, graveyard hate you can play. Uh, it doesn't affect us in any way because we don't use the graveyard at all. A couple of negates are there against controlly combo e decks as some extra counter spells. An extra cut down, an extra go for the throat, and a temporary lockdown. Our additional removal against aggro decks, of which there will be many. There's all those rabbits and mice. You know, Boros Convoke was already a really good deck prior to rotation, and I think it's even better now after rotation. So it's important to be able to shore up your matchup against aggressive creature based decks. Uh, we're running a couple of make your moves because artifacts are very popular so a lot of people run like destroy evil as a white cyborg card this is basically a destroy evil it costs one more but can also hit artifacts in addition to enchantments and big creatures um, and there are a lot of artifacts that i think are important to destroy most notably urbrask's forge is a card that's very popular right now so um, I'll, I'll pay an extra mana for the extra versatility of being a full disenchant as well as something that can kill uh, big creatures for those mid-range matchups and finally a shieldred uh, a second shieldred in the sideboard for matchups which is good where it's good which is like lots of mid-range matchups basically oh we also have binding negotiation number four if you want to board up a little more discard against control decks so that is the plan we are esper control we got a rack that's legal in standard now so i always like uh, including these kinds of effects that can damage our opponent while we facilitate our plan of emptying their hands so that they can't do anything. I like having good, you know, win cons that can end the game quickly in decks like this. Stoic Sphinx fills that role as a surprise flash flyer. So this has all of the elements of, of a control decks that I like as a control player. Let's see how it does in this crazy standard format. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think standard is going to be really fun for a while, um, and I might be playing quite a bit of standard uh, for the near future. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it, and if you like off-meta, off-kilter, MTG content, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Alright, here we are in post-rotation standard, playing against Picasso, with our talented banditry deck, we'll be on the play. And, yeah, I mean, this hand looks fine on the play. Man, it's a little slow, but we're gonna see a lot of draws like this, I think. Hopefully they're not too aggressive because we don't have a removal spell, but we've got good stuff and we're on the play, so we'll keep. We'll go for a surveil. And I will keep a cut down. Uh-oh. Okay, no one drop. That's good. Play our black source. So mana, it seems, is really rough. It seems to me like mana in standard for three color decks is really rough. Artist talents. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Level two non-creatures cost you one less. Level three, if a source would deal combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much plus two instead. Okay. That's slightly scary. Let's do some binding negotiation. Koth. Flick a coin. Season of the Bold. Virtue of Courage. Oh, they're a big burn deck. Wow. I can get behind this. I like what uh, I like what our opponent's cooking here. Koth is a little scary. I can counter it though. Virtue's also scary. Mm. <laughs> Would it be crazy to take shock? That's like kind of the card that scares me the most. Uh, I think I'll go for Koth. All right, there's the Virtue of Courage. Just shocking me for two mana. All right, we missed our land drop, which isn't great. Level two, non-creature spells cost one less. 
Okay. So, I don't think I want to draw cards with these steps ahead. Okay. We missed our land drop again. There's 26 lands in the deck. Rin's Resolve. That's fine. Playful shove. Cough. Alright, we'll counter the cough. So their burn spells are all doing two more. Would deal damage to opponent or permanent they control that much damage plus two. Okay. So they're hitting us for four. For three. Another artist talents. I don't think I want them having two artist talents. Of course, now I don't have a counterspell for the Virtue of Courage. I also don't have mana for Shieldred. I think I'm just going to hold up a counter and or, Sto or, or Stoic Sphinx. This deck is sweet. I can totally get behind this. They're mono red burn spells, it looks like. Till the end of your next turn, whenever you cast a spell, it deals two damage to up to one target creature. Virtue of Courage. Whenever source deals non combat to an opponent, you may exile that many cards. You may play those cards this turn. of the bold. I think I'm gonna let that go. I wanna get down my Stoic Sphinx. Uh, they have a lightning strike. Which does do five damage. Alright, I'm gonna cast the Stoic Sphinx. Bait out their lightning strike. Okay, they had to flick a coin, which is enough to kill the Sphinx. That's unfortunate. Alright, let's ban its talents. Make you discard. Uh, I think we'll tick it up. So we got a shrieking affliction on him. Virtue of courage comes down. going off. Wow. Cool.
All right, they probably got us here. Yep, lightning strike. All right, GG's. All right, <laughs> I like oppo I love opponent's deck. So a big burn deck, and this makes me wish I had sideboard uh, high noons, which I had right up to the last moment when I was gonna play this deck. So if we want negates, we absolutely want binding negotiation. We want make your move. We don't need our sweepers, that's for sure. Now, I could see them juking into having some creatures. So I'm not going to cut all of our removal. I think just like this should be fine. All right, we got our colors. We got Kaido. This plays. Hold up no more lies this turn. Yeah, we want to counter that. And let's get Kaido going. So this is my opponent. I'm not it. Phyrexia's secrets won't stay hidden for long. There's Ren's resolve. Strike for Kaido. I'll find another way in. All right, let's go. Bandit's talents. Discard. Let's get Liliana ticking. To help, but you won't we'll be outsmarting me. Our fortress, I guess. Watch it. Flicking a coin. All right, let's play our hostile investigator. Discard. Investigate. Let's. We can't gain another clue, but I think I do want a plus again. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather. Discard a swamp. They have Fable Passage. Tick up our enchantments. There's the season. Start racking them. Drop it. Attack for four. All right, they're going to strike the, the investigator. up both of our talents. Oh, this one's already level two. Okay. Cool. Getting double rack activations. Now 
Another sinking of the bold. They have this ridiculous land. Virtue and Courage. And a Ping Lily. Let's draw a card. Couldn't be more annoying. All right. Um, hostile Investigator. I don't want to lose my spell gyre. These cards are all in exile, right? So they could kill Lily here, but I think that's okay. Actually, I can crack a clue. Okay, now let's take up all this card away. We all have things we'd rather forget. There's the artist talent. They level it up. So their non-creature stuff costs one less. Alright, they're going all the way. So their burn does two more damage. Shelly's pretty good. I think I'll play Shelly. Let's crack our clue again. more lies plus this card no more lies Got their virtue. It's gonna shock me. they can kill Shieldred here. They still have two racks ticking on them, though. They're going to lose all these cards at the end of the turn. going to try to burn me as much as possible. The question is, can they kill me right now? And they might be able to. Yeah, I think they can. Do they have another shock? They do. Wow. Okay, GG's. Wow. Our opponent's deck is really cool. Well, we almost got him game two. See, I was thinking High Noon is a card that I want in my, in my sideboard. But uh, at the last minute, I cut them. But I think High Noon... There are a lot of decks that want to multi-spell. There's like a bunch of prowess decks. Um, so I think High Noon would be a good sideboard card. That's a sweet deck from our opponent, though. GG's.
Salaberga is our opponent. Be on the play. Um, our mana base is slow, but that's kind of par for the course. We don't have any... We have a Liliana. I think we can keep this on the play. We do get a Surveil. Um, do I want a Sea Chrome Coast? I don't really want a Sea Chrome Coast. Opponent wants a Sea Chrome Coast. So we'll go with Restless Reef. Alright. Let's go with Bandit's Talents. No more lies, so our opponent's playing control. Um, just gonna pass. Probably go for Stoic Sphinx on their end step. Big counter. All right, we'll drop Liliana while they're tapped down. Something suspicious is going on. Pitch our sweeper, probably. We all have things we'd rather forget. All right, there's Kaido. It's plus again. Tishana's Tide Binder. Counter that. Hard, I'm hard tired land. of secrets. Caretaker's talent, so they're a token deck. Okay. Plus. They're gonna deduce. Draw a card off the talent. Discard our you redundant Lily. Me. We can ultimate Lily next turn. And we can Kaido. I'll take on an army myself. Let's draw a card. Sometimes the winning move is to sit and watch. Okay. So let's. Draw a card. Keep Let's plus eyes. Lily. Another Tide Binder. All right. Let's hostile investigator. Discard. Get a clue. Pass the turn. Restless Anchorage. We're gonna 
create a treasure token and draw a card. Would love to kill this tide binder. in the tank here. At least I hope they're in the tank and not salt stalling us. Um, alright, our opponent just salt stalled it out, so that's too bad. Like, doing that so early into a format, you know? Just, like, adapt. Red Res Rider is our opponent. We'll be on the draw. And, yeah, we've got our colors, we've got removal. We can, we can play. Scoured Baron. Let us surveil. Sunfall. Don't think we really want a Sunfall right now. More life gain. Alright. Oh. I don't have a black source. Oops, I need to play my caves there. Uh-oh. Okay, we didn't get too badly punished. Um, I'm gonna go with binding negotiation. Ariette's lullaby. Destroy target, tap creature, you gain two life. <laughs> Plus land. Uh, okay. So there's some kind of life gain deck. They've got to be using creatures, right? Maybe I'll cut a sunfall for a, I don't know, Shieldred number two? Why not? They chose to draw. Um, we'll keep this, sure. I think we'll lead on Fable Passage and go get Island. Okay, they're playing deserts. I think I'll go get an island so that I have Counterspell available for my three steps. And let's go for Get Punished because I draw Liliana. Finding Negotiation. Never stalked by nightmares. Put plus one plus encounter, then scry, lullaby. Banalish sleeper. Pyrexian sensor. Alabaster host intercessor. What is happening? What is even happening? Um. The Banash Sleeper they can actually play. Opponent saying, your go. So I guess I'll take that. We draw Spell Gyre. Let's go with Bandit's Talent.
They discarded El Ariet's lullaby. There's the Phyrexian sensor. Well, we miss our land drop, which is unfortunate, so I guess we'll just pass. I will draw cards with three steps ahead because I want to find land. Plain cycling. Alright, let's draw cards. Discard. Cat cut down does kill Neva. I guess we'll discard Spell Gyre. Alright, let's go snag a swamp. Get to you with Lily. A fight? And you think you can win? <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Come on, opponent. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Phew. Thought we were getting roped again, but thankfully we did not. Okay, never. Target creature or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so they can get back their Phyrexian sensor. So let's make our land drop. I think I'll plus. We'll discard. Don't overthink things. Kaido. I don't know. Go for the throat. Man, our hand is good. I think we'll discard Kaido. Play Aklazot. Petrify. Alright, they get to kill Lily here. It's no fun when they hit back. Um, let's go ahead and level up our enchantments. Uh, sure. Kill Neva. Now, does this still apply? So I can't cast this? Yes, it does. Poor Halberd. Alright, I guess I'll fully level this up. Gonna equip. Eh, let's go ahead and kill this thing. Norn's Inquisitor. Okay, gonna transform it into a token. Take this. Alright, we'll go for a Glimmer of Genius. 
bandit's talent, dark slick shores. Let's see another bandit's talent. I don't think we want dark slick shores though. Okay, no witnesses. That's pretty good. Except we don't have double white. So let's bandit's talents. Tick it up. Tick it up. Jawbone Duelist. 1-1 one, one, Double Strike Toxic 1. So for Rex King Orzov Aggro. Alright, he gets to draw two cards here. That's pretty sweet. Uh, let's just no witnesses. They sack their clue. Alright, let's play our sewer. You don't want Seacrim Coast. Play Shelly. There's the sleeper. Kicks. Alright, we can draw two cards. They probably should not have played that land. Alright, let's get back. Axel. Bandit's talent, we'll keep that. Rexian Vindicator. Well, good thing we have a removal spell for it. Alright, you can have a 1 1 instead. How about that? We'll draw three cards. Make you discard. Scoop. All right. Uh, Phyrexian Orzov equipment, toxic graveyard, something or other. Crazy stuff happening in Sand right now. I love it. Inch Zero is our next opponent. We'll be on the draw, and our hand looks fine. Hello, Inch Zero. Um, I think I'll go Fabled Passage. Alright, our opponent's playing the tournament winning Japanese Boros deck. Might be the best deck in standard. Having seen it played uh, by couple of content creators, Jim Davis. It won a huge tournament. Um, it is legit. All right, we want a binding negotiation here. Oh, okay. It's a different deck. Kaparakti Sunborn. When it attacks, you may tap two untapped artifacts. And our creatures you control if you do discover three. Resolute reinforcements. I think we'll take resolute reinforcements. There's a carrot cake. Okay, Sea Chrome Coast is a good draw. We're gonna have to deal with these guys because uh, we don't want them discovering three every time they attack.
Wojak Investigator. At the beginning of your upkeep, investigate once for each opponent who has more cards in hand than you. Um, okay. I think we'll let that go. We want a sweeper now. Actually, Stoic Sphinx can surprise. Lock that thing. Alright, these are Stoic Sphinx. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one. So they can spend their buff spell, that means they don't play their four drop. And their flyer still dies. That's fine. I'm okay with this. I'd like a sweeper. Okay, Bandit's Talent, you discard. These carrot cakes are really good, actually. Novice Inspector, uh-huh. Alright. Uh, I want to draw cards now. Liliana. More Lilianas. Um, I'll discard a Liliana, I believe. Alright, let's expand its talents. Take up our talents. They get all those clues uh, by their uh, novice inspector and their uh, Bojack investigator. More carrot cakes. This card is really, really good. Man. Uh, cut down. It gives a rabbit when you sack it as well. Wow. Okay. Play a lily. When I win, you you. Tell me what you know about the Raven Man. <laughs> Off you go. Everything coming at me. Uh, okay. I think I'll just cut down one of these creatures, I guess. And they have a helix. Alright, carrot cake. What a card. I want temporary lockdown. Make your move. Cut down, go for the throats. Binding negotiation? I think that's better than negate. Cut spell pyre. Maybe shielded too. Lily again. 
seems pretty bad. I'll just cut all the lilies. Do I want to bring in make your moves? Three mana to kill a carrot cake? Seems pretty bad. Yeah, do you want negates? Cut earth high. And yeah, we'll go without the negates. We'll do we'll do the discard plus our main board counter spells. And our hand looks fine. We'll keep lead on force of mana. Hostile investigator. I think we do want a hostile investigator. Alright, let's binding negotiation. They have double carrot cake, resolute reinforcements, hop to it. Double shock. Take a carrot cake. Binding negotiations. We do want more lands, so we'll keep that a dark our waste. Uh, we'll take hop to it because it creates three bodies. Oh, they got the investigator, that's not good. So I think we'll kill it and bend its talent. All right, let's go with. Hostile Investigator. Okay, so they have a Shock in hand. That's their last card. So Temporary Lockdown should clean this up very nicely. Alright, the Helix. Lockdown. Oh, it, it also gets our bandits, <laughs> our bandits talent. Okay, a little bit of a nombo there, just a slight nombo. Uh, So we just bunny negotiate and they shock. I think we'll just hold on to this. Maybe they'll draw a more expensive spell. We'll wait at least a turn on this. Carrot cake. Well. Yeah, that's why I didn't have Temporary Lockdown originally. I added this at the last minute. Because it does hit our own Bandit's Talents. Mm, just more lands. I guess I'll do this now. Make them spend their card. Sure, we'll exile a card from a graveyard. 
from exile. It doesn't matter. Geologic appraiser. What a rip. I'm gonna hop to it. Alright. Need to draw a sweeper. More like shieldred, just more lands. Sweeper or bust. Just more lands. Okay. Well, you're going to see a lot of decks like this in Standard. Because there is that Japanese Boros deck, which is like the best deck. Uh, there's the mice, that, the the rabbits. Carrot Cake is kind of a crazy card. You're going to see a lot of decks like our opponents. Artsy MTG is our opponents. We'll be on the play. That's a one lander. We have to mulligan that. That's a zero lander. There's 26 lands in our deck. 26. Guess we're going to five. Uh, let's bottom Restless Reef and three steps ahead. I don't know, maybe Dark Slick Shores putting two lands to the bottom. I don't think we want to do that. Maybe Bandit's Talent. So let's Surveil. Caves. Ugh. We'll bin that. Spyglass Siren. Chrome Coasts. Botanical Sanctum. Lost Jite. I guess if I was going to kill it, I could have killed it before they gained the life. Um, which I think I am going to kill the Wormlid. Actually, I'll kill... Yeah, let's kill the Wormlid. Dark Six Shores. We can Stroke of Midnight the Jite. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, I think I want to get rid of the Jite. You get a 1-1. One, one. Okay. Play our Archive, do some Surveilling. Bandit's Talent. We can use Bandit's Talent. Zoetic Glyph. Okay, they are like an in soul deck. So let's count of that. Alright. Bandit's Talent. We're just so far far behind on cards. Multi five. Uh, 
attracts his fall artifact battle enchantment or creature with flying mean boarding that enchantments are, are good to destroy artifacts or enchantments yeah yeah I can see it so they have one for our bandits Hard-hitting question. Okay. We draw land. I think we're just gonna attack. We got nothing else to do. We're tapped out. Gain a little life. No more lies. Yeah, we don't have enough mana to keep up our counter spell if we do this. Probably should not have attacked there. Particularly when they're so pinched on mana, Ginger Group. So our mistake allowed them to play a Ginger Brood. Um, I don't think that makes too much of a difference. So now we're looking for a Sweeper. And we're dead, right? I guess not technically. When it attacks, it does its thing. Hazy Nitro, you're a bot. Zoetic Glyph, well, I'm kind of that. Oh, we're actually just dead on board. Okay, well, mold five, and then total flood out there. So we want cut down, we want go for the throats, we want, do we want temporary lockdown? I don't think so. We want make your move. And probably negate. One, two, three, now let's keep that. Get rid of Urtai. I hate Get Lost. In fact, I think I'm boarding Get Lost out. Because I don't want to give them more artifacts. I'm giving them artifacts with no witnesses, but I need the sweepers. Uh, Cut a No More Lies. And a Binding Negotiation. Or maybe a bandit's talent. Bandit's talent. Oh, they've got the uh, that badger. I think he's a gruel badger. Uh, okay. We're on the play, and we have lands and stuff we can do. So I guess we're keeping. Hopefully, this surveil will help us find some re removal. Belgire. Looking so slow and clunky right here. We're on the play though. I think I can keep it. Ginger Brute. Dark Slick Shores. Binding Negotiation. Tough Cookie. Glyph. Agatha's schooner.
Boy, their hands are really good. Um. Hmm. Their hand is very, very good. Uh. What to take here? Tough cookie? I guess it's probably tough cookie. So they can play the scooter. They can't attack with it right now. So let's just play our Fabled Passage. Now I'm regretting keeping this spell dire. Although maybe it will help us find something useful. Soul Cauldron. Another Zoetic Glyph they leave on top. Okay, so the schooners are four or five. Grab a swamp. The gate. So what happens if I hostile investigator? They discard Soul Cauldron. They can Zoetic Glyph their Soul Cauldron. What happens if I don't cast Hostile Investigator? Well, if I do, they discard Soul Cauldron. They can pump the Schooner to be bigger than the Hostile Investigator anyway, so I just... They just eat the Investigator. It's all bad. It's all very, very bad. If I just let them attack me, they're going to hit me for... Five? Um, I think I need to hold up a counter spell for Zoetic Glyph this turn. Surge engine. That's a good draw. Um, I think we need to counter that also. Can't let them have another creature. Of course they have the soul cauldron, so they can give whatever they want, all those abilities. Zoetic glyphs in hand. Yeah, this is looking bad. 
I don't think we're gonna win this one. Um, I guess a little hostile investigator. Because we can't really do much else. That makes it to a 5-4, so at least the hostile investigator can trade for a Zoetic Glyph creature. But I think I have to actually just chump. So they don't have any more creatures to do this with, right? Exile target creature. When a creature is exiled this way, put a counter. So I actually can block this ginger brute. actually pretty good. Let's cut down this ginger brute now. I have to hold up negate for their zoetic glyph and just hope they don't draw a creature. They can get out of. They can get out of range. Ugh. Boy, that's annoying. What creature was in their graveyard? Oh, the ginger brute. Okay. So we're probably dead here. Negate that. zero new cards from Bloomboro, I will point out. And it's talent. In that, does he have menace or anything? No. Okay, let me make you discard. Make you discard. We do get to investigate. Wormlet, yeah, that wins. Now they have two creatures they can attack with. Alright. Too bad. Too bad. Bears in jars is our opponents. And our hand has no blue mana. 
we're on the draw. We do get a surveil, so I think we can keep. Alright, surveil into some blue mana. No witnesses. Been that. Third path iconoclast. No blue mana, eh? Bandits. Song of Totenzans. <laughs> Still no blue mana. Uh, okay, we do have another. We do have a sweeper, so that's going to be helpful. War leader's call. Go wide, boost everything. All right. Well, let's go for the sweeper. I think we got a Shelly, right? A Shelly. Uh, why did it just end my turn? Oh no, my opponent- Why did it just end my turn? I had a mana that I could use to level my- Oh, it's already level 2. There's nothing else I could have done. song um, everything has haste yes okay so we're dead so give me removal removal Negate, negate, Shelly, lockdown, these spell gyres, <laughs> uh, thinking the format may be a little too fast for those. Liliana, not looking so great with their immense go wide strategy. Maybe I want make your move to get rid of those war leaders calls. Yeah, let's cut that. Cut Urtai. Maybe cut a Bandit's Talent. Um, our hand is just way too slow, I think, against what our opponent's doing, so we'll mulligan. Uh, this hand is also extremely slow, and probably just loses to them, but I don't think I can mold to five, so... They mold once, I'm gonna mold to five. And here we just have one land. Alright, well, we got removal, so... We need some help here, deck. Let's bottom three steps ahead, and... Make your move, everything that costs more than two. Please, a land on top. Temporary lockdown, no. Ah, and we whiff on land. Our deck is, has 26 lands, by the way. Third path. Uh-huh. Call. 
Okay, this is seen Cone Coast about a turn too late. And we still have no black mana. Third path, well, we'll counter that. The board is wide enough as it is. You'd think that my deck has like 18 lands in it or something, but uh, it actually has 26. I mean, it's possible I could have kept uh, one of my first two opening draws, but they both had nothing that cost less than four mana. So, alright. Sometimes the magic gods just decide you are to lose a game. Okay, we're against Pika. We're going to be on the draw. And we'll keep. I have a modern, modern, modern Boros deck that plays it. Or I did prior to the release of MH3. I don't think it's viable now. Boros, so is this the Japanese deck? Invasion of Gobakan. Well, that particular bandit's talent is very expensive now. These other two, however, are normal price. They discard Get Lost. Well, I would love to keep up uh, more lies. I just. Level up the enchantment, hold up no more lies. Resolute reinforcements. Thousandth moon. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures, put a plus plus counter on it. Then create X known creature tokens that are tapped and attacking where X are the number of counters on it. So... This is going to let them flip their invasion. So unfortunately I have to actually have to counter this. Because if I, they flip their invasion they can give their creatures indestructible. Which blanks my sweeper. Oh I can't even cast my sweeper anyway. What to do here? I think I Kaido Midas. Relax. Phyrexia has minions, but I have friends. Okay with that. Alright, they're not gonna flip their invasion. They're just gonna kill Kaido. Can they draw a white source, please. No. Alright, let's do this. Start racking you. Carrot cake. That card's so good.
All right, we'll go ahead and destroy that battle. We'll give them a 1-1. One, one. And I'm not even sure if we'll sweep them. Liliana? I think we'll just tick this up. Let's tick up my racks. Got a bivouac. More Liliana's. We're at fourteen. All right. I think I will. They only have one creature land, right? Yeah. So let's get rid of their bivouac. That means I can't play Lily, though, this turn, but that's okay. We need our second planes. We'll hold up a counterspell. Draw some cards. Discard Liliana. Okay, let's sweep you. giving them so many cards, man. Boy, this is just lined up so awkwardly and missing land drops, too. Um, I could go Hostile Investigator here. No, I think I need to just Urtai. Kill the Arc... Kill the Archangel. Give him a card. More can be done. Our deck is just so clunky. Uh, so we want temporary lockdown. We want cut down. Go for the throat shieldred. Yeah, we can lose, get lost. We can lose a spellgeier, a stoic sphinx. Do I want some negates? Maybe. Probably. All these go wide decks, man. Carrot cake and whatnot. Probably just lose the lilies. Hmm. I think we'll keep. I'm sick of mulling and then just having 
having nothing to do, so I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> We've been getting screwed over by our moles. Okay, uh, let's... Fable Passage. Virtue of Loyalty. Let's grab a swan. I already have a shadowy backstreet. Yeah, I'm gonna grab a swan. Alright. Herbrass's Forge. Counter that. Back streets. We don't need more lands. That one. Um, we can counter that too. I want to save my no more lives for virtue of loyalty though. I think I'll just sweep. A tap land. Alright, let's sweep. You get a clue. Another forge. No more lies. Carrot cake, no thanks. Can I see a temporary lockdown, please? No, I cannot. Alright. Hostile investigator. Lightning Helix, okay. Sure. Alright, I really do need to find something here. Temporary lockdown. Cut down. of that. Well, cut it down while I still can. Okay, so I need temporary lockdown here. I only have one in the deck. Or some way to get to deal with the forge. Stroke of Midnight, for instance. Get rid of the forge. Alright, let's see if we can get rid of that duelist. I will trade. Okay, so they're not playing the Virtue this turn. That's good. Caretaker's Talent. Gonna see that card a lot. 
<laughs> now we're just now we're just drawing lands. Okay. It is like that. Well, we have a demolition field for their bivouac. Create a creature that's a copy of target creature you control. So they're going to draw a card that's off of their talent, of course. And this gives all their tokens plus two, plus two. Okay. We just draw land. So, yeah. I think we get one. No, we're actually just dead. Boo, man, deck, you screwed us. Okay. So, our final result for Talented Banditry in post-rotation standard was a 2 and 5. And I think there's a few problems with the deck. It is far too loaded on big spells. Uh, as we saw, standard is an extremely low to the ground format. Very aggressive. You're going to see so many Boros decks. Uh, as we encountered a couple, I think, at the end there. There's another one that we where we fought the Japanese Boros deck that didn't make the cut because there were some technical issues with the recording. But you're going to see a lot of Carrot Cakes. You're going to see a lot of Caretaker's Talents. You're going to see a lot of uh, Lightning Helixes. You know, you're going to see a lot of, you know, War Leaders Call, possibly. Very low to the ground, Boros aggressive decks are going to be the thing. So that means that you need to have very cheap interaction to, to deal with it. And uh, this deck just doesn't have that, have enough of that. Um, cut downs, go for the throats. Um, I think three color decks in standard might be problematic because the, the mana is just so bad. And there are so many lands out there that can generate tokens, which draw cards off of the caretaker's talents that um, I feel like you need demolition fields to be able to deal with it. But you can't run that many if you're running three colors because, you know, you have to take care of your colors. So, yeah, the mana in standard is makes it really hard to support a three color deck um so yeah if i were to play a deck similar to this in the future i definitely would want more like cut downs i'd want more go for the throats temporary lockdown is really where it's at you know uh you want that card because it just shuts down gets rid of all the carrot cakes gets rid of all the tokens doesn't get rid of caretaker's talent but um gets rid of everything else that like is the engine for that Aggressive deck, Urbrask's Forge. That's a card that you're going to see a lot of. So, yeah, you need to be ready for the aggro Boros decks because those are going to be all the rage. And I think probably the best decks in Standard right now are our aggressive Boros decks. Um, but it was fun to see a, a number of different weird cards and weird archetypes that we don't see in this stream. And I've seen more of that in uh, practicing and whatnot. So it's cool. I think Standard is, it could be fun. Uh, it's fun to not see like the Wandering Emperor every single game. Blood Tithe Harvester, Wedding Announcement. I'm so glad that card is gone. I hated that card. Rafine, Rafine, really, that card was just the most ridiculous card ever. Even like Memory Deluge it was such an oppressive card in the control decks that played it, myself included, you know? It's just such a good card draw spell that like uh, it feels like it's impossible to beat a control deck once they get to the point where they're resolving those. So yeah, I don't know about this deck. I kind of just uh, built it, you know, as a as an entry point for myself because I do like to play uh, Demir control decks. This particular build is way too slow and clunky. I think you could actually do like a like a a better deck that's focused around Bandit's talents. Uh, there's good like one and two mana discard spells. You play like um, Hopeless Nightmares. You can play a four of uh, Binding Negotiations. There's like another two mana spell that you could play a, a two mana discard spell um you know hostile investigator as a four of is great four lilianas i think you could you absolutely could play a very focused uh like eight rack style deck where you your primary win con is bandit's talent um i think that's probably a mono black deck if you're going to go that route so that way you don't have color troubles and you can play the demolition fields so talented banditry not so talented as it turns out 
Oh, one other thing about the deck. I think, like, um, if you're playing white, High Noon is a good sideboard card to run if you're not a deck that needs to multi-spell a lot itself. Because a lot of the good spells, including the Bor a lot of the good decks, including the Boros, Boros Aggro decks, is including that Japanese Boros Aggro deck, they do like to multi-spell. So uh, High Noon in the sideboard could slow them down a lot. And I think, you know, I might try to build some kind of deck that main board focuses on High Noon as a, like, meta-hate piece. We'll see. Um, anyway, this deck is not where it's at. You need to be a lot more low to the ground to deal with the aggro. But I'm excited about new standard, post-rotation standard. It's cool to see lots of new cards. You know, I'm sure things will settle down and people will start just playing Boros aggro. And that's all you'll see forever and ever. But um, for now, at least, there is a bit of variety. And um, there's a lot of potential there. So look forward to me playing more aggro on the channel. Because um, I do like it when aggro is fun. Uh, I think it is good for the game of Magic when aggro is fun. It's healthy because it's like relatively easy to acquire the cards. Uh, I like playing on MTG Arena, which is the place where you go to play standard. Just because it's fun to play on Arena. It's kind of more video gamey than than Moto is. So I like it for that reason. So Talented Banditry, not so much this time. Maybe a, a different build, uh, but not for a while. I look forward to trying out different things in standard now that I've taken my first dip. But that is going to do it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you like off-meta, off-kilter MTG content, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Hope to see you in the next one, bandits. Have a good night.